I'm Denton Davidson for Gold Derby, and I'm speaking with Marcelo Zarvos, the composer of A Journal for Jordan, which stars Michael B. Jordan and Shante Adams. It is directed by Denzel Washington. Uh, Marcelo, this isn't the first time you've worked with Denzel. You also scored the music for his Oscar-winning film Fences. How did that relationship form with Denzel Washington that has led you to work on multiple projects for him? Well, uh, Fences was really kind of sort of out of the blue in a way. I mean, it was, I, I had no real connection. I had worked with, with Antoine Foucault, who Denzel, you know, obviously famously collaborated many times with, but, uh, but it didn't really come through that. Uh, it was really kind of old school. I sent the music. I loved the play. I knew that they were doing it. And I, I begged my agents to kind of be went through like that route that, you know, a lot of 95% of the time that never works out like that. But in this case, I sent some music. He really responded to it. And the producer Todd Black as well. And the, the editor, um, uh, he was been born. So they all kind of dug what, what our music was. And then I had a meeting with him. Um, I remember vividly went to Paramount and they, I watched the, the cut in a big theater by myself. You know, the whole thing felt very luxurious. And then they whisked me away in one of the little carts to go meet Denzel. And it was, and you know, I think we really hit it off on a very human level right away. Um, I went uh, just, you know, I'm in awe of the guy like everybody else is, you know, but uh, I found him to be extremely open and very, just very happy to be doing. I remember at Fences, the joy that I felt from, I think, you know, being on this side of the camera for him, of course, in Fences, he was in both sides of the camera, but I think being a, getting a chance to direct a film, it was certainly, it was his third film, Fences, but he still, I felt like he was really just always very, grateful to be doing it, you know, and especially something that um, sort of, uh, you know, of such high artistic value like that in the fences was. And, um, and then, you know, it was a great experience. Uh, we, we, we you know the film did very well. And um, then like in all things film, you know, everybody goes their own way. And then uh, one, um, I found out that they were doing Journal for Jordan, they, they reached out and said, Denzel wants to to talk to you. So I, I remember going and meeting with him and we had a very long, uh, I didn't realize I had the job already, but it one of the, what, you know, we had a very long conversation about it. And as I was leaving, he was like, okay, great. Really looking forward to doing this again with you. And, and, uh, and it was a very, um, he really likes to communicate sometimes not directly like, okay, this is what I want. And he kind of will talk about other things that are, you know, we talk about obviously politics. I mean, obviously talk about COVID because of this was smack in the middle. Like when I met him was right, right when he was really, really cooking when I, when we discussed uh, Jordan. And, um, and there was just this very easy way of communicating with him. I think he liked uh, my sensibility in general for, for music. He, he, he definitely, he's, he's very, very, um, very interested in music, both, I mean, he's always listening to music, always talking about it, but he, he just has, more like most directors, I never really met a director that didn't really love music and really didn't understand the power that it has in their films. But um, uh, as they started to shoot, um, I, uh, of course, I had read a script before I met him, so I really knew what 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 the movie was about we discussed some general ideas and when they started to shoot they also uh, this was a first thing that i was brought in very early like way before they started to shoot so we had a chance to, i had a chance to really think about it and kind of live with it in my mind and sometimes even if you're not working on something sort of daily you can you know it's in the back of your mind kind of, kind of yeah. the wheels are kind of turning and and then i started getting um dailies which was a really interesting way of, of approaching a film. I very rarely, I might send dailies, but um, it turned out to be a great, very ins inspiring thing to do because with the dailies, you don't really get to see the film, how it runs, but you kind of see the look of it. There were all, there was a lot of this drone footage doing for the Iraqi parts of the story that I thought was so beautiful. And there was this kind of flying, this idea of you flying and, He's a very spiritual man, as he's not, you know, shy of, of, of talking about it. And 
And I felt like that was the, my hook into the story was kind of the spiritual part of it because, you know, ultimately it's about somebody talking to their son from, from the beyond, you know, I mean, he mm -hmm. leaves this journal and, and, and there is throughout the story always this very strong spiritual component to it that I, that I latched on very strongly. And, um, and then by the time they were done shooting, I got to visit the set, which was really fun here in New York. They were shooting in Staten Island and uh, in a big uh, set there. So I got to meet everybody. And of course, like all things COVID, it's extremely complicated, you know, to, yeah. to, you know, to do that. But and I wrote a bunch of music just to the dailies. And then by the time they started shooting, they actually used some of that music. It, it is in the final movie. So we had this really, by the time I really, sat down with him in the cutting room we had a real great baseline to, to go i mean it was there was still a lot of work to be done but it felt like the language and the what i always call the temperature of the music which i find it to be one of the most important things especially in a drama like you know just like the actor shouldn't overact i feel like the music you have to really make sure not to overact or underact and so uh, and it was a very very smooth and very a lot of in person you know uh, uh we had a bubble going and we 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 were out tested constantly and of course everybody had their their, their shots and all that but then i was i met with him once a week over the course of many months we would look over some music and never like okay here's 10 cues let's mm -hmm. you know let's look at that and, and it was always like a few at a time and it was very gradual very organic and very um, it felt very smooth and really in sync. Everybody was very much in sync about it creatively. How do you decide uh, what sort of instruments to use when you're working on a composition? And you know, does it make a difference what scenes you're talking about? Because as you said, there's scenes in Iraq, but this is also a romance in, in many ways. So what guides you in making those sorts of choices? You know, I knew like. I, I, the one sort of type of film I hadn't really done, even as it turns out, it's not like it's the biggest part of the film, but it was the whole military thing. So I, I was thinking a lot about it. And so we, you know, I thought of, of, of brass and we ended up using a lot of, um, of uh, horns or the French horn in particular uh, for, um, for all things sort of for the military aspect of the story, which it, it's a more, philosophically military, if you will, you know, it's not like there's, this is not a war movie, but it's about somebody that was a committed soldier and who really believed in what he was doing. So that was, that was the first kind of hook into the sound. I used it very early on. And there was this kind of this call that comes back many times with the, with the French horn and kind of a solo horn. Then uh, I thought a lot about, as I said, those flying scenes, which ultimately it's just for a small portion of the film, but it was one that made an impression on me. So I, I thought of something that was kind of reaching up and kind of to the heights. And I ended up using a lot of flutes mm. for it. And then the other big instrument is the piano because Denzel loves the piano. You know, um, he's married to a very gifted pianist. Uh, his wife, uh, Paulette, is a virtuoso pianist. and, and uh, I think he dabbles in it himself, although he never really talks to me about it. But, uh, and he loves the instrument and he loves how I play on fences. There was a lot of piano and so that was the other. So between those three things, I felt like we had, those were sort of the three anchors sound-wise, the flute, the flint and the piano. And then of course, strings throughout um, as kind of, you know, just this big blanket of, of emotion that, that happens throughout. And the soundtrack also has a lot of great pop hits. So like Charles loved old R&B music and Dana loved a lot of 90s music. How does composition play along with songs chosen for the film? Um, do you sit down and kind of decide, okay, this scene is gonna be a song and then we need your composition here or how do you figure that all out? You know, it, it depends on the project. Uh, sometimes it's kind of like all up in the air. Um, in the case uh, for, for Jordan, a lot of it was already established. By the time they were cutting, they knew very well which scenes would definitely be, of course, when she's singing in the car. Yeah. And, you know, there's no question there. 
and I, I love all that music and, and it kind of informs you more like not in a direct way like okay we're gonna react to whatever that song is in the instrumentation and try to mimic it but more like it gets and I think this is a great example of it on, on Journal for Jordan it gives you a window into the characters personalities and into their souls what they're attracted to and and so I feel like I see it more in that way emotionally what are the things that they like and Charles, of course, is a more old-fashioned guy and, and uh, who likes, really loves th those other tunes. And that tells me something about who, who he is and who he was. And same thing with Dana and, and her choices of songs. But it definitely was very much um, kind of set, I would say, in the cut and in the script where they wanted the songs. The one big surprise is that we, at first, we had agreed that most of the courtship was going to be with songs. It was going to be our source. Mm -hmm. And so I stayed away from that, um, from those scenes for a while. And I, when we started the process, I, I assumed, and it was a good lesson of like not to assume anything in a creative partnership, that it was going to be more like Francis, where it was extremely sparse. <clears throat> there was like a little over 30 minutes of music in Francis. And so we started with that. There was about 35 minutes of score at first. And then it started to expand. And he started to ask, well, what if we keep this music going here a little longer and a little longer? What if we start a little sooner? And the score was kind of like, like a, you know, a dough, you know, bread. It's something that was kind of like growing very, very organically. And a lot of the spots where we thought it was going to be songs ended up being score. And the score grew to be a it basically doubled. You know, we ended up with about an hour of score, and a lot of their courtship uh, is scored. And I think one of the reasons there was also a technical aspect because a lot of the courtship is on the phone, as you know, because they're it's a long distance relationship. Actually, their entire relationship was long distance. And, you know, it gets tricky to, to put a song over a phone talk conversation because it really, it's hard for, for the words not getting in the way. You know, it's different when people are in a room and, and you can have a few more clues. So, uh, so we ended up, at first we thought there would be no music for the phone calls, let's have it be very naturalistic. But even that started to kind of grow and I remember when I brought in what became the love theme and and not even necessarily thinking that that was the love theme, but I remember in the end of the meeting, Denzel turned to me and said, I think we got our love theme, you know, it was it was really fun. It's like discovering together like that. Uh, that particular day, I even remember his son happened to be in the cutting room and we all listened to this it was supposed to be a short little cue, but he loved the melody. And it then ended up expanding in this in this theme that comes throughout the movie and and it was very he's very open like that to to kind of see what the movie is saying and hear it and I felt like Hughes Winburn the editor is very much like that so there's this discovery process that is very exciting uh, uh, to do with you know with masters like Denzel and Hughes so of course you know. Wow. Um, I'm fascinated by people that can write music because it's not a skill that I have. There's, you know, this limited amount of notes and people continue to create new melodies out of them yeah. over and over and over again. Has music always sort of lived inside of you or what brought you into this career and how did you get your start in music? Well, I fell in love with music through film scores, really. And then eventually, a little bit after that, the Beatles too, which was big when I was a kid. I mean, they were, when I was born, they broke up. So it was, but it was, of course, the power of their music. But I fell in love with, with the music of the movies that I would watch, you know, back when I was a kid. I remember, uh, of course, all the Spielberg stuff. And, but even reaching a little bit, I remember my first big love was the music for The Sting, which was how Scott Joplin music arranged and reimagined by, by Marvin Hamlish. And, and I kind of always just loved the music of the films. And I didn't even realize why I loved it. And I think over time I realized, you know, this is, it's a real, very experimental, you know, what music can be in a film. It's kind of unlike music in any other setting because you are not only allowed, but you're almost expected to combine it in ways that wouldn't necessarily appear in a recording. 
And that was always very interesting to me, this idea that you can have electronics or percussion and combine it with an orchestra, with a jazz group or with whatever, whatever it is, it feels like a very open, fertile ground. And, you know, I started by some standards, not that I started playing piano when I was 11 years old. So it was, or I know plenty of people that started much earlier, but, but I had the bug right away. I really loved it. And I couldn't think of anything else. I remember learning my first piece when I was 11 and my first paid gig was to stop playing it. You know, my grandmother said, to you, I'll give you 10 bucks if you stop playing that piece. You know, so, um, it was, it's been, and I, and I'm always thinking about it. And it's, it's, uh, I get very cranky when I don't make music for a long period of time. Well, it seems to have definitely worked out and paid off for you. Um, congratulations on this movie. It's the music is beautiful. And to viewers watching this, head over to goldderby.com, make your awards predictions and check out more interviews with top contenders. Uh, Marcelo, congratulations once again, and thank you for chatting with me today about your work on A Journal for Jordan. Thank you very much, man. Thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure to chat with you.